Welcome back to Cardades.org. Today we're going to be continuing with our series, Dumbfounding Definitions, Dizzying Distinctions, and Diabolical Doctrines. Series sorting through some of the jargon of philosophy. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at what are Boltzmann brains. Now, a Boltzmann brain is a thought experiment named for Austrian physicist Ludwig Boltzmann. The thought experiment argues that there that it is more likely that you are nothing but a brain that arose spontaneously from the chaos of the universe with all of your memories intact in this exact moment than a human being living on planet Earth. Now, that seems like an odd conclusion to say that's more likely, but here's the argument. So, before digging into some philosophical implications and potential justifications, let's look at the principles in physics that might lead us to draw this seemingly rational conclusion. The second law of thermodynamics makes the case that in a closed system, entropy, or chaos, will always increase until the system reaches a thermodynamic equilibrium. Simply, systems move from order to chaos, increasing in overall entropy over time. Now, however, given sufficient time, particles will arrange themselves to form into such a form as to temporarily reduce entropy in a local area, even in a chaotic system that in the grand scheme of things is moving towards complete entropy, it doesn't mean that there won't be collective small masses of low entropy areas as particles bounce around randomly. Eventually, the particles will bounce around enough to lead to new and interesting formations, even if the vast majority of the formulations are random. This is a similar idea to a monkey with a typewriter who, given sufficient time, will write the works of Shakespeare, though the majority of the monkey's writing will be gibberish. Entropy is a similar concept to that with the idea that, over time, the monkey would write more and more gibberish, if, if the monkey were perfectly modeling entropy. But even if the monkey were writing more and more gibberish over time, it doesn't mean that in there at various points the monkey might have a chance of writing the complete works of Shakespeare. Now, in such a system, the more localized and the more brief the amount of order, the more likely it is to exist. It's more likely for the monkey to type to be or not to be than the entirety of Hamlet. This then raises the question, what is the best explanation for your conscious experience right now? That there are millions of very low entropy brains, in fact, billions upon billions if we're just looking at brains, and individuals who are able to live and think caused by the very low entropy state of the Big Bang. This would require a very low entropy state of the universe for a comparatively long, long period of time. Or is it more likely that a single brain, complete with all of your memories, with all of the neurons and the electrons in exactly the places, up until this very moment, popped into existence and started to degrade? According to the Boltzmann brain's argument, the latter is much more likely to arise. The brain popping into existence by a random assortment of particles happening to perfectly fit, come together and exist as your brain, because the low entropy state is much more isolated. It is much smaller. It is a single small brain as opposed to an entire planet of low entropy beings, let alone an entire universe and galaxy of comparatively low entropy. Um, and it's much more temporally isolated. This isn't something that goes on for thousands or millions of years. Rather, it's something that is existing for a few seconds and is disappearing. It is much more likely that that is the explanation on the view of entropy, according to Boltzmann, or according to the Boltzmann brain's argument. Note that this wasn't an argument that was actually offered by Boltzmann, but rather an argument that was named after him. So. As a skeptic, I am always interested in skeptical scenarios, and the idea of a brain that suddenly pops into existence complete with memories is quite intriguing, as it raises challenges for things like claims of personal identity. What makes you identical to yourself over time if you didn't exist before this moment, and if you won't exist after it? How can you know that you really exist, because you could just be popping into existence and popping out of it in the next second? That said, I'm unconvinced by the underlying argument in support of the conclusion that you are more likely to be a Boltzmann brain than not. I think it's possible you're a Boltzmann brain. I don't know how likely it is, and I don't think you do either. One place to object would be to the second law of thermodynamics on the grounds of the problem of induction. 
simply because in all of the situations we can model, study, or imagine entropy increases inexorably doesn't follow that it must always do so, or that it will in all places, just because the laws of physics as we know them now, or as we understand them now, exist in a particular way, we can't know if they will continue into the future, if they'll hold tomorrow, let alone if they held before the Big Bang. We can't study or test theories in places on the other side of the universe, in the cosmological principle that attempts to allow us to make suppositions about the other side of the universe is complete, unjustifiable, unfalsifiable nonsense that is not science. Check out our video on why cosmology is not science for more. But there are also a range of objections that arise from far more skeptical scenarios. So the Boltzmann brain hypothesis is still very unlikely. It seems far more likely, despite even, even if it is more likely than the entire world existing in a low entropy state, it's still very unlikely that a bunch of particles would pop together, exist as your brain for a second, and then slowly begin to degrade. It seems far more likely that we are in a simulation created in a universe where the second law of thermodynamics does not in fact hold. Imagine that you're in the matrix, but in the world outside the matrix, if you pop out of it, the second law of thermodynamics isn't true, and the laws of physics are completely different in that universe. And that the simulation was designed specifically to make life appear to exist. In fact, perhaps the simulation was designed with laws like the second law of thermodynamics to eventually end at some point. Such a scenario would mean that the Big Bang and our planet were programmed and did not arise out of entropy, and therefore is not this highly unlikely low entropy state, but rather conscious planning by creators of the simulation. While we can't exclude the possibility of Boltzmann brains, we can't exclude other possibilities either, nor can we accurately judge their comparative likelihood without all of the information, since it's unclear if we actually are existing in a simulation or not, and there'd be no way to judge how likely that is, all of the duplication argument, there's no way for us to tell if that's more or less likely than a Boltzmann brain popping into existence and this not being a simulation. What do you think? Are we more likely to be Boltzmann brains than normal human brains? Or is there no way to tell which scenario of a normal brain, a Boltzmann brain, or a simulated brain is more likely? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. Subscribe if you like this video and you want to see more, and hit that notification bell so you can always be notified when we are posting new videos. Watch this video and more here at Carnades.org, and stay skeptical.